We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to take apart an American 451 ELT. Why are we going to do that? Because many have asked, what's inside of that? ELTs are installed in our home-built aircraft for the purpose of transmitting a distress signal in the unlikely event that we have a crash. Now that we have collected the appropriate tools to take one of these things apart and get at the guts inside, let's get started. It will come as no surprise that a major portion of the ELT is battery storage and so with four screws we should find the batteries in the back half and sure enough this unit has four D-size lithium cells these are non-rechargeable have a very long shelf life but do need to be replaced when they get old and that leaves the other half is where the actual uh, guts of the unit are located and we'll need to take that apart. It appears there is a seam going around the circumference and looks like I should just be able to pull this apart because the screws were removed. It's being held in place by this manufacturer's tag here so we're just going to have to peel that back. Now the tag does say that removal of the tag will void the warranty, but I'm not too concerned because we have a good electronics technician that will uh, put this back together again. And so I'm just going to pull that cover and sure enough that exposes all the parts. Now that one cable is simply the battery supply from the battery contacts into the circuit board so that should be easily removable and we'll pull that off and now we can think about removing that very dense uh, circuit board from the plastic box now it appears that four screws hold the circuit board in place so we'll simply remove those and see what happens next. And with those out, we'll try and just pull this away from the enclosure. It is giving me a bit of a challenge here. And now I notice that a couple of switches are attached to the circuit board and need to have their nut collars removed in order for the switches to be pulled through the enclosure. So we're going to spin those nuts off and then should be able to push the switches backwards and then the circuit board hopefully will then pop out. And sure enough that looks real good. And here we go. Whoops, it looks like the switch broke off the circuit board, but like I say, we have a very good technician which will take care of that issue. The cylindrical object is the ELT's G switch, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. That turns the transmitter on and off in a crash and the black box in the middle that's the connector for our remote um, unit to turn the arm the unit remotely and actually this is two circuit boards and I notice a connection at each end and so this should just pull apart 
There's a connector with pins at each end. There it goes. So this, in fact, is two circuit boards matched together with a connector at each side. And lo and behold, this circuit board is double-sided. Lots of parts and pieces on both sides. Because this is actually a transmitter transmitting on two frequencies, 406 megahertz and 121.5. And this board here is just for holding the G switch. Now I can hear a little bit of a click when I shake that switch because that basically is what turns on the transmitters to send the distress signal in an accident. Whoops, now I, I didn't do that, but I notice uh, that there must have been a poor solder connection there. That G switch broke off of one of the connections at the circuit board end. Again, our technician will uh, take care of that. But uh, it is kind of interesting to shake that G switch and you can actually feel a little weight in there of some sort. So this is all of the parts that make up an ELT. And the last thing I really want to investigate some more is that G switch. I want to know what's inside of that because that's what a crash uses to turn on the transmitters and send the distress signal. So we're going to have to uh, actually take that apart. Now I'm uh, going to use the tool that we call a tubing cutter. We use it to cut open pipes and whatnot because I, I just feel that weight inside when I shake it and we need to take a look inside and see what's inside of that there. Uh, that's where one connection is at one end and then the wire at the other. So something closes the circuit between the two ends. So we're going to use a tubing cutter and very carefully remove or cut the casing in half and take a look at what's inside because that's really the, the key to all of this. The rest of the ELT is just an electronic transmitter that turns on when this switch closes and of course this switch closes when there's a great force enacted upon it and uh, I'll be happy if we just solve the final mystery of how they make that switch work what type of weight is inside whoops now there goes the end the end fell on the floor but the part we're holding here basically has just a spring so that means in the other half is some sort of weight, and there it is. It's a ball. It's a golden ball, and that thing travels down the tube against that spring, and when the ball touches the contact at the other end, it closes the circuit. So now we know how that works. Now the ball's not falling out because of the burr I made uh, cutting on that sleeve. But uh, that's a pretty simple, foolproof way to close a switch contact in a crash. The only other thing we haven't opened up is the battery. And I suppose we could do the same thing, though. That's got lithium inside. I'm not sure I should really do that. Maybe I'll hold off. What other devices in the realm of experimental aircraft should we take apart? Leave your ideas in the comments below the video. And there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about what's inside one of these devices. And until we can figure out what to take apart for next time, everyone, back to building.